Great. So, welcome. Uh, this is my talk. I'm functional and so can you. For those who don't know me, I'm JD. You can find me on Slack as Dorf. I, I stream on Twitch, JD does dev, and I'm on Drupal.org as Dorficus. So I've been doing PHP and Drupal for years, uh, HTML since the 90s. I also have experience as a paramedic EMT and firefighter. I did that for about 10 years before I got into development. And I'm also a member of the Drupal CWG conflict, res conflict resolution team. Uh, in addition to that, I consider myself knowledgeable about the mentally ill because I myself am the mentally ill. And if you have mental illness, then you need to know that you're not alone. I always put this disclaimer, I'm not a medical professional. I'm not giving medical advice. I am just a guy standing in a room looking at people and talking with you. So why are we here? Yes, it's a loaded question. And I'm not here to cause any kind of existential crisis uh, regarding the meaning of life and our place in the grand scheme of the universe. Please do that on your own time. We only have 45 minutes. I'm here to talk with you about us. That means I'm not here to lecture or say how great I am because I'm barely managing, but that I'm here too. I'm here to have a conversation. Just because I have a slideshow and the computer uh, doesn't mean that I'm the most important person in the room. And I wouldn't be up here without all of you wanting to be part of this conversation. Uh, maybe that conversation will happen while I'm up here looking down at all of you from my ivory tower of a podium and clicking slides. Maybe it'll happen after. Uh, maybe it'll happen with someone who isn't me. But most importantly, if one person in this room realizes or helps someone realize they aren't alone, I call that a win. Because a talk similar to this one helped me get help. So before we get into how I'm functional, and so can you, um, I'm going to take a few minutes to brag about the diagnosis I've collected so far. I know brag isn't the, the right word for it, but I can't think of anything else. Uh, depression. Major depressive disorder or clinical depression. Chronic, um, common, and serious mood disorder. And those who suffer have persistent feelings of sadness, hopelessness, and they lose interest in activity as they once enjoyed. This is some days. <laughs> ADHD, um, characterized by persistent pattern of inattention and or hyperactivity, impulsivity that interferes with functioning or development. This gets overused a lot for a lot of people who say, oh, I'm so ADD, I'm so ADHD, no. For me, when I'm not on my meds, it's like everything in the room is screaming at me to pay attention to it at the same time. It makes life pretty difficult. Um, also, it makes work a little bit difficult. Uh, PTSD. Mental health condition triggered by a terrifying event, either experiencing it or witnessing it, Symptoms include flashbacks, nightmares, and severe anxiety, as well as uncontrollable thoughts about the event. That sounds like the ending of like a antidepressant commercial. Side effects may include, but no, that's, that's how uh, PTSD works too. One psychologist explained it to me in computer terms because obviously a walk-in white dude with a beard and glasses and says, oh, you must know computers. And uh, he, he compared it to the the brain to RAM versus hard disk. You've got your short-term memory, the RAM. You've got your long-term memory, the hard disk. In PTSD, an event gets stuck in the RAM. So the CPU can get it, send it back and forth really quick. Uh, it never makes that transition to being saved data in the long-term memory in your hard disk, or SSD as the, the times are they, times they are changing. Uh, and that really resonated with me. You know, everything, the event itself, lives right there, ready to jump right out. And part of that um, also comes with anxiety. It's emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure, increased pulse, sweating, all kinds of things. People with anxiety usually have recurring intrusive thoughts or concerns. They may, have, may avoid cer certain situations out of worry. <laughs> They may also have physical symptoms such as sweating, trembling, dizziness, or rapid heartbeat. 
but it can look like a lot of different things. It could be irritability, it could be obsessive behaviors. So there, there are a lot of you know, overlapping in the Venn diagram of mental illness and mental health diagnoses. Um, there is quite a bit of overlap. Overscheduling or overworking. I've never done that in my life, I promise. Overindulgence. Please don't look at me below <laughs> this line. Um, dizziness and numbness occasionally, sleep, sleepiness and insomnia. Lack of concentration and avoidance. It's not just being worried. So it can take many, many different forms. So why do I consider myself functional now and how, how are you? Uh, well, it's difficult to explain. But it's easier to say why I wasn't. Um, and I don't mean a functional member of society, uh, the standard definition of it, because, well, society kind of sucks right now. But um, before, working was extremely difficult. I couldn't focus on anything, which led to a cycle of, oh, I'm not focusing, I'm not putting out code, I'm not putting out any results, I'm not closing tickets, oh, I'm not closing tickets, I'm going to get fired, I'm going to lose my job, I'm going to be unemployed. Uh, this is causing me to not be able to work because I'm so freaked out that I'm going to get fired and I'm not, and just a cycle, cycle. I, also a little bit of imposter syndrome, does anybody know what that is? <laughs> uh, I didn't think I deserved a job when I first started developing. I didn't, there, there are millions of people out there better than me, how the hell did I get this? Um, and I figured that they were going to figure out that they had made a mistake any day and just send me out on my ass. Uh, I was terrified of everything. Uh, would I be fired for something I forgot to do? Uh, like be better or be as good as the people who are better than me? Uh, is that space between my bed and the wall big enough for me to fall into and suffocate? Uh, and because I was frightened, my fight or flight instinct would take hold and I would lash out angrily. Uh, so the two kind of go, that's one of the symptoms of anxiety too, is your lizard brain just says, oh, I'm scared. Yeah! Everybody awake now. <laughs> uh, I was also, uh, I also held back a lot because I was afraid to speak up or go against what anyone else said. So in addition to being angry, I was also extremely non-confrontational uh, non because I didn't want to cause an argument. I didn't want to be part of it. And that goes back to PTSD, which goes back to, oh, it all goes back to each other. Um, I had an extremely hard time focusing on anything that mattered. I could spend hours trying to beat Super Mario World without so much as a bathroom break, get all 100 stars. I've done it. Difficult. Star Road is the hardest, all those exits. Uh, but 50 minutes of coding was too much sometimes. I couldn't get through like just writing a few lines. And I'd find my way down some Twitter rabbit hole, or as it is now, some excrement rabbit hole. Excrement hole? Toilet, it's all toilet. And personal relationships, I had no idea how to have them. I had a couple friends, but nobody that I would really call friend. They led into my life, say different things. Uh, you know, tell them what's going on in my head. More acquaintances. So so now, what's different? Well, I can usually hold job. Uh, I haven't been fired yet. Uh, my anxiety and anger is in check most of the time until you say literally when you literally don't mean literally. <laughs> uh, I don't freak out about all the things, just most of the things. Well, some of the things. Uh, and in case you were wondering, I never fell in that one inch space between my bed and the wall. I survived. <laughs> Most days I can focus and get things done that need to be done, assuming the distractions are kept to a minimum. And that, that goes on, not just on me, you know, keeping, well, a lot of it is on me keeping the tabs closed, keeping the browser closed, making sure that I only have what I need. Um, I can communicate more gooder and make more work go at you. <laughs> and I think that I have personal relationships. Uh, I'll probably break all these down a little bit more in detail later, but first, how did I become functional? Well, I looked at object-oriented and said, go away. That, that's a developer joke, please. <laughs> uh, step one, 
realize there's a problem. I realized that there was a problem when I had an anxiety attack, well, flat out panic attack. I went to college in my mid to late 20s. I was an EMT paramedic firefighter, which, funny story, I could do minor surgeries in the back of an ambulance, but I wasn't qualified enough to teach a preschooler how to finger paint. <laughs> because of the training that paramedics get, we, we only get certified, licensed. It isn't general education type of stuff. Um, but I, I went back to school and I was sitting in my car right before math and I just started freaking out about everything. It wasn't an exam day, it wasn't finals, it wasn't a test, not even a quiz. I did my homework, everything was turned in. I'm just sitting there going, I, I can't do this. I had the same response that if I was going to be chased down by a bear the second I walked through those doors as, uh, you know, just to walk through. And I ended up throwing my car in reverse, driving home the entire time, just <laughs> freaking out. And that was the point in my life where I said, I need to do something about this. I, I, I don't like living like this. So, I finally took the step of saying, or of not saying, oh well, let's just keep on keeping on. Um, I made doctor's appointments, I started therapy, I eventually started medications. And those things helped out a lot. I was on my way to maybe being a functional person. So one thing to remember, just to stop my 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 step by step, um, if you have mental illness, you're not to blame for it. However, if you deny it and whatever treatment you may need to be functional, then you are at fault. Mental illness is not your fault, but it is your responsibility. Uh, Marcus Parks. He's host of last podcast, or one of the hosts of last podcast on the left. I think it would be a COC violation if I recommend you all listen to it, but I think it's funny. Uh, it's, they do a lot of supernatural, true crime type stuff too. Um, enough of plugging that. Steps three through infinity. Uh, hopefully you didn't think this was gonna be a you know, 12 step, three step, five step program, no. Uh, it's no simple project, process. A lot of hard work, a ton of failure, and a lot of drug, uh, medication, I and therapy to get me where I am. But here are some suggestions that work for me and maybe you can use them, maybe not, maybe you'll walk out of the doors and say, what an idiot, just don't say it to my face because I, I'm fragile. Um, another disclaimer, these things work for me but I'm not telling you, I'm not prescribing that you go do them yourself. Um, we're all on our own journey, what helped me may not be the right solution for someone else. I went to therapy, and I personally think everyone should try therapy at least once. Um, and one thing to consider is a relationship with a therapist is a relationship, and you're probably not going to hit it off right away. It's okay. Most people don't marry the first person they kiss. So uh, a relationship with a therapist, it's okay to, 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 to break up and go see a new one. Um, and also, some people see it as, you know, I'm just paying somebody to listen to my problems. Yeah. Exactly, but they're also trained in how to respond to those problems and help you get past them. I am a huge fan of better living through chemistry. I take meds for my illnesses just as someone with heart problems or diabetes should take meds for theirs. Mental health is health. Taking meds for a health issue is not something to be ashamed of, but it took a while to find the right combo. But eventually, my doctor and I got there. Um, just pro tip, if you do try medication with consent of a doctor, I'm not advising anybody self-medicate here, uh, give it time to work. The first few weeks of a new med can be hell, but when things level out, I saw a lot of improvement once I found that right thing. I mean, there, there were six weeks, every time I tried something, and six weeks of hell before I go, okay, finally, this doesn't work, or, oh, what do you know? I, I'm not that bad right now. So in addition to keep me working, I wish it was a better podium. I broke down tasks. This helps me, might help you. Um, how do you eat an elephant? One bite, One bite at a time, exactly. Break it down. Or as a vegan, I don't condone the eating of elephants for even for comedic purposes. So how do you eat a giant um, broccoli, or a giant block of tofu. 
Uh, try to find the smaller parts that can be accomplished on their own. And you know, this is also functional instead of procedural. Another dev joke, come on, We're, I threw something <laughs> in here. <laughs> Overall, or don't get overwhelmed by the big picture. It's easy to get distracted and freak out like I do all the time. But once I get that lizard brain under control, then things go a lot smoother. So, we're all at a Drupal camp right now, so let's, let's try an example. How would we break down the tasks if a PM or your boss comes to you and says, I need a module right now. It needs to paste gener or allow a user to put generated HTML into a text field. It needs to make that HTML data, and then it needs to insert that data into various fields of a custom content type. And this is not a real thing. I just put words in soup, and this came out. Not chat GPT, though. Uh, but, I mean, what could be some smaller tasks for this? Create a field for the user to paste it. To there, exactly, yeah. Okay, I got to create a field. I've got to um, create a module, do the module info file, or info YAML file. I've got to do, you know, there are different steps. And if you use a ticketing system like JIRA or similar, you can break down those steps into different things. It doesn't all have to be epic. Another thing that really helps me is to make lists. Planning your day may be easier if you start off by making a list of what needs to be accomplished, and if you don't finish something, move it to the next day's list. I have a fantastic device. I'm not shilling for Bezos here, but I have a Kindle Scribe that it's like a remarkable you could write on, but also has the advantage of having the Kindle store so I can do crossword puzzles on it too. So I make my list. Things I should do, make list, put things on list, put list in slides, I did that, and now show list to session. I don't have an editor on here to make that line across, but I did it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, communicate more gooder. This one is difficult. How many people see their coworkers on a daily basis? See, visually, speak with, in per like voice to voice on a daily basis? I didn't see a lot of hands go up. Text-based communication is hard. I tend to read it in the most negative tone possible. So, hi, how are you? That somebody may mean in a very nice, like, hey, I'm generally interested in how your day's going. Is Hey, how are you? I'm busy, that's how I am. <laughs> Unless the person on the other end is a complete and total jackass, don't assume malicious intent. And that's for me, not to remind myself, I don't care if you, <laughs> you all do, I just have to say it out loud every once in a while. If you use um, Slack or Teams or something similar, do any of you use Slack or Teams or, yeah, everybody. Uh, how easy is it to set up a quick call with somebody? In Slack, you can huddle, but with the flick of a switch, a virtual switch, but still. Um, a lot of times, taking five minutes to talk over something rather than text back and forth endlessly can save so much confusion and prevent so much hostility. With that, don't be afraid to ask for clarification. Um, clients and other non-tech people may not know how to put things into tech words, and if you're one of the tech people here, it may come as a surprise, but some devs aren't great at converting tech talk into normal English. There, there is a language barrier. <laughs> also, take some responsibility for yourself and make sure that you aren't using a hostile tone, either with text-based or voice-based communication. There is a big difference between your code is bad and you should feel bad, and hey, some issues here, let's see if we can work through it when you're doing a PR. This one helped me immensely. Set yourself away. Uh, I have dedicated focus time during the day. I block out several hours in a block. Nobody's going to put a meeting during that time. Uh, I know I have stand-ups in the morning. I know when my weekly meetings are if I have them. I know when I should keep some time open, when there might be overlap between projects. Uh, but I block out large swaths. Um, and those are that, that's time for me to put my heads down and focus. I do try to keep it flexible if an emergency comes up or if someone needs help and if I can find a good stopping point, but I, I, I make sure that it's, you know, don't schedule unneeded me uh, um, meetings during this time. Or if 
you do schedule them, make sure that they are meaningful. Um, close your unnecessary tabs. Close the X or Twitter. Close the Facebook. Close the Mastodon. Close the MySpace. Close the Friendster. Close the GeoCities. Uh, Angel Fire. Close them all. Um, because now you won't be tempted to tab over to something. Lock the door if you need to. How many people work from home? How many people have other people in their home? How many people have ever had somebody walk in when they're in the middle of something and just say, hey, I was wondering, do you want white bread or wheat bread? <laughs> yeah, that, that completely derails me when, when something like that happens. Uh, because I, it takes me 15, 20 minutes to get back in the mindset where I was. So lock the door. Just make it clear, I'm not trying to do anything secret in here, I'm just working, leave me alone. And turn off your phone within reason, I mean, turn off notifications so you're not bzz, bzz. And your watch. <laughs> uh, just get away from notifications you don't need. I'm not calling you out, but I'm calling you out. <laughs> uh, put on some music. I found that music that either has no lyrics or non-English lyrics or non-native tongue lyrics really helps because then you're not listening. Because I know I there have been times for me, probably, you know, uh, if never gonna give you a, wait, no, that that's not how it goes. Um, so a lot of, you know, non-English or, or some good techno, that's what really gets me going. Born Slippy by Nux, just, I, I can focus like none other than that on, uh, on repeat. And dig a moat around your desk. Alligators, crocodiles, whatever you want to put in there, piranha, keep people away. Last one's optional. I haven't tried it. It's completely hypothetical at this point. Take me time. So outside of work, it's difficult, but it matters. If you need time, take time. If you have PTO, use it. It's yours. If you don't use it, a lot of places, you lose it. Mental health days are health days. Mental health is as important as, important as physical health. You know, if you cut off a finger or if you're bleeding really badly, you're probably not going to just be fine with it. If you're not in the right headspace, if you're having a hard time, if you're having a depressive episode, uh, take the time off. Don't be afraid to not do anything for it. Um, this is do as I say, not as I do, because I, I can't not do something for a day. But don't be afraid to try. Uh, so this has all been fun. These are things that have helped me. But I do want to clarify. It's just a guide. This, these are things specific to me that I want to share out and hope that it helps other people. These helped me in my day today, and I hope they might help you too, but I want to be clear, I still have very, 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 very rough days. Um, but thanks to my treatments, coping mechanisms, um, medication, therapy, they're much less frequent and less intense than they used to be, but they do happen. I mean, before I used to be on kind of a roller coaster, uh, but now it's not as bad. Even out and then it, it, it is much better. There are still times when I get overwhelmed, imposter syndrome takes over. Sometimes I get through it, sometimes I'll just type out a message in Slack or, or something and leave it as a draft for days before I either press send or delete it because I think it was a bad idea. So as somebody with mental illness, speaking to other people in general, we're not alone. This is, I think, 2022 statistic. Um, might be 2021, which of course something happened in the years around that. I, I don't remember what because that whole time frame just disappeared for me. But an estimated 26 of Americans, ages 18 and older, suffer from a diagnosable mental disorder in a given year. And that's not necessarily chronic uh, conditions, depressive episodes, um, anxiety. But still, that's one in four people suffer from a mental disorder in a given year. When I gave a similar talk to this in 2019, that number was only 20, so one in five. It's going up, but it also means that we're not alone. 
So a couple things to remember here before you can start to become functional, you need to recognize if there is something preventing you from becoming functional. If you have mental illness, you're not alone. I can't stress this enough, what works for me may not work for others. Don't go into your doctor and say, hey, this rando told me that he is on this medication. I want it, I want it, I want it. Um, and it didn't happen overnight. And I also want to stress this, there are still bad days, but overall, quality of life is much, much better. And take time when you need time. As developers, usually we have the mindset where we have to be heads down. If we are, especially working from home, there's no delineation between work and home. Uh, I don't know how many times that I've just been bored, gone downstairs and started working. I'm not getting paid any paid anything extra. I don't make overtime. I just go down there and start working on something and then realize, wait, I'm giving away my time. No, I, I, I need to take the time to do something that I enjoy. But most of all, no matter how you may feel about yourself, you are all amazing people and you have my respect. I want to thank you for coming to this talk and sharing your time with me. Thanks. And Open it up for a Q&A if anybody has any. If not, thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah? Um, you mentioned that um, you started becoming functional when you heard a talk like this mm -hmm. somewhere else. And I'm wondering, what was it about that talk that helped? So, and I thank you for reminding me, I should have put a slide in there to think that. Uh, so the question was, what kind of talk was it that um, helped me to, to seek help? Uh, I actually volunteer with an organization called OSME, Open Sourcing Mental Illness, and the talk I saw was from the founder of that organization. It's a 501c3 nonprofit out of Indiana. Um, we've got members around the world, but the founder gave a talk at a meetup in Chicago. It was a PHP meetup. And everything that he said just resonated with me. Um, and you know, he was able to answer questions. And this, when I saw the talk, it was at a period of time where I was kind of in limbo. I had gone to a doctor. Uh, you know, I had started therapy, but I was going to a psychologist who doesn't have uh, prescribing rights in Indiana. They said that, hey, we recommend that you be on these meds and they'll help you out. I couldn't get an appointment with an actual doctor for three months, so I know that I need the, the medication, but I have to wait it out. So I was just overstressed in general. But the things he said, the talk he gave, uh, it was about mental health and tech, it was about how, how he coped with a lot of things, uh, how he formed Osme to improve the workplace around mental health and the stigma around mental illness, it just really resonated. So I reached out to him, emailed him, and asked, hey, I think this is great. Can I become involved? Do you mind if I give a similar talk at some Drupal events? And he's like, hey, you can take my slides if you want to. You can give my exact talk. So I grew a beard, started wearing glasses. Uh, <laughs> uh, but he, he was really great. The organization has been amazing. I highly recommend. We have a couple of handbooks that are available on LeanPub uh, for mental health in the workplace, mental health for HR professionals, and um, mental health for managers, I believe. It's like $10 for all three, no DRM. So, uh, and since we're a nonprofit, every, every bit helps. Uh, but yeah, does that answer your question? That Okay, I just want to make sure that I didn't get too derailed on. I mean, I love the organization so much that this is the logo. Can you tell me the name again? Open Sourcing Mental Illness, okay. OSME for short, osmehelp.org. Yeah, Mark. Um, it, it feels like in the last decade we've come quite a ways in terms of talking about mental illness and oh, yeah. trying to reduce the stigma. Uh, what areas do you feel we really need to keep working on as an industry, as a society, to further that from where we are today? <laughs> I, I think that just choosing words 
would be the the best thing because like you said it's been a long time uh more celebrities like pete davidson he's been tremendous for you know, erasing stigma around mental health and one of my favorite bits that he 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 did on SNL on a weekend update was, and I'm here on behalf of the mentally ill to say, Meh! and just joking about it, it kind of makes it, <laughs> makes light of it because it's not punching down, it's not him making fun of somebody else. It's him saying, I have problems and I accept them. I, I can laugh at this. I can laugh at myself. I'm dealing with it to a point where I, I can laugh at it. But one company I used to work for, um, they had an initiative where we were rebranding, and the the title of it was "We're going to go from cray to yay," as in we're going to go from crazy. And so, you know, that as somebody with mental illness, okay, well, you're you're saying crazy, <laughs> which has negative connotations. Maybe that isn't the best thing, especially when it came five minutes after you just told about how inclusive and how <laughs> diverse and how how much uh, more accepting the company wants to be. Uh, using stuff like that. Stop saying OCD when you don't mean OCD. Uh, at least in my opinion, it, it, a lot of it has to do with just verbiage, language, and being more cognizant of you know how people might take it. Anyone else? Or? Well, I was just going to follow up on that. I've been to several talks at web conferences about Seems like that's a thing. Is it a thing in this community or in the larger society? I mean, I think it's great. Yeah, it's. Are giving these talks. When I started doing the my my original talk, I think it was 2017 or 2018. Um, I was the mental illness guy in Drupal. I was a mental health guy in Drupal, and so many other people have taken on and started doing their own. Um, Matt Westgate, founder of Lullabot, one of the founders of Lullabot. One of my greatest honors is he saw my talk in Iowa, I think, Drupal Corn. Forgive the name, <laughs> it's still a good camp. Hasn't been, I don't think they did one this year, but, um, and then he went back to Lullabot and said, hey, we have holes in our coverage. We have holes in uh, the way that we're handling this. Let's form a team. Let's see what we can do to improve this. And they changed their insurance. They changed, you know, how they, some of the benefits that they have. And so that's like, the pinnacle. Everything's been downhill since then, uh, but you know, being able to help guide change like that. And now, like you said, there are other people giving it. I don't have to be submitting this talk. I, I enjoy doing it, but I, I don't have to be the the mental illness guy of the Drupal community. There are so many other people doing it. And I'm thrilled. Anyone else? Otherwise, I'm going to press stop. All right.